Let's start with the Spring MVC Essentials this time. So in this section, we are going to learn handler mappings and the attributes, the resolvers, and do the exception handling. Let's start with the assignment solution of day one. So the assignment was that there was one application which was written in XML. You need to migrate it to Java configuration. So let's see that first. So we have XML config application and Java config application from repository. First of all, let's see the POM file. So the difference here is that this XML config would be having the web XML file and this Java config won't. So in the Maven compiler plugin, we need to set the configuration fail on missing web XML should be false. Otherwise it would start complaining. This is the first change. Now let's go to the web app, webinf, web.xml. So this web.xml would have the root context and your web application context. So this is context config location, which is creating the root context and context loader listener. So this is in our Java configuration will be by web application initializer. So this is actually web application initializer. It's at the end of the chain. It is actually implementing web application initializer. That's why it will work as web XML. Here we are creating the web application context and also the root application context. Now, so we had dispatcher servlet configuration. The con beans are residing in spring context.xml file and the URL map to slash. So we have the web config.classes and it is mapped to slash only. Now let's take a look at the root context.xml file. So here we are creating the property placeholder and reading the application.properties file. And since we are reading the application.properties file, which is going to be read by data source in creation of data source bean, which is driver manager data source, setting the values from the property placeholder that we have read, like JDBC driver class, uh, URL, name, and password. And we are creating another bean, JDBC template, which is in the constructor argument, we are passing the data source that we just have created. So let's see the root config. In the root config, we are reading the property placeholder and importing the repository config class. So this is also a bean that we have created here. This is the same bean. In the location, we are setting the application.properties. Here we had set into the location application.properties. Now let's see the repository config. This repository config, we are creating the bean of driver manager data source. Similarly, we were creating the driver manager data source being here, setting the properties driver uh, class name, URL, username and password. So setting the properties here into the driver manager data source being. And now in the constructor argument of the JDBC template, we needed to pass the data source. So here we are creating the JDBC template, passing the data source, which data source is auto wired since the bean is created here and it is auto wired here. So when this bean will be started in generation, it will have this data source already auto wired. Now let's take a look at the web application context that is spring context.xml. So here this is annotation driven. Let's take a look at the web config. So this is a thread configuration and we had component scan. So this is our component scan. So this default sublet handler to forward the request for static resources here we have enabled it. Now we are creating the user to bean of the user. If this is required, we have model user making it as a component. So it will be already component scanned since the base package is com demo. So all the components will be scanned having at the rate component or at the rate service or at the rate repository. So it or will be scanned and created the bean out of them by default. Now we have custom row mapper. This is also the bean that we are creating. And here in the custom row mapper, we have also created it as a component. So the bean of this is also created. Now in the user DAO bean, we are creating the user DAO and passing into the constructor argument, the custom row mapper that we had created and the JDBC template which is referring to the JDBC template into the root context. So if you see the user DAO in the Java configuration, 
So we have custom row mapper JDBC template and we are creating the user DAO in the constructor and in the constructor we have auto wired the custom row mapper and JDBC template. So this part is replaced by here. Apart from that, we are creating the user service and in similarly in the constructor argument, we are passing the user DAO. So we have user service and in the constructor argument, so this is a service and we haven't auto wired it. And instead this is should be user DAO. So we have auto wired this user DAO bean to our service as well. Now apart from that we have MVC view resolvers. So let's this will be covered here in the web config or Java file. So we have created the bean of view resolver with the internal resource view resolver. So MVC view resolvers bean is replaced by web config. Now let's take a look at the second assignment. The second application fails to start, you need to debug and fix the application. So let me just import this application. So this is a Spring MEC broken application. Now I will try to clean this, build it and try to run it. Let's see what happens. run it on the server. So we had got the exception. Let's start looking at the trace. Error creating bean user DAO IMPL. We couldn't create the bean user DAO IMPL. What is the cause? No qualifying bean of employee available. So there is no bean of employee available. Let's take a look at the user DAO IMPL. So in the user DAO IMPL, we have the constructor. So this user DAO IMPL, whenever the bean would be created, there is no default constructor here. We have a parameterized constructor and this is taking the employee object. So we need to use at the rate auto wired here so that employee bean will be auto wired directly to this constructor. So this is the constructor injection. Now let's see the employee bean is created by default or not. Let's go to the TO and let's make it a component so that a bean would be created after the component is scan. Now let's clear this up and run this. Now we got another exception. Let's see what exception did we get. Now we are having the issues in the creating of bean of home controller and it says no qualifying bean of employee service available. It says expected single matching bean but found two beans that is custom employee service and default employee service. So let's go to the controller. We are trying to auto wire an employee service. So let's see employee service. So employee service is an interface and we have two implementation of this interface default employee service and custom employee service. Now what happens when you do auto wire by default auto wires a bean by its type not by its name. If you want to auto wire something by its name use at the rate resource annotation. So that's what spring advises to use at the rate resource annotation if you want to auto wire something by its name. By default auto wire works and auto wires a particular bean by its type. So we have employee service type. So it searched the in the bag of bean what is the type of employee service object and it found two objects. One is the default employee service and second is the custom employee service. So these two beans has been defined but it can auto wire only single bean. So that's why there is no unique bean available. So what you can do is 
you can use the qualifier annotation. This qualifier annotation helps you to create a name of the bean. So you can assign a name to a particular bean. I will call it default employee service. And similarly, let's create a qualifier bean over our custom employee service as well. Let's name it custom employee service. Now, when you want to auto wire it, as I said, don't use auto wire, use at the rate resource annotation. Resource annotation is meant for using or binding the beans by its name only, and it comes from Java X annotation. And the name that you want to, it's up to you, whichever you want to prefer. Let's say you want to prefer default one. Let's bind it using default. Let's clean this and run it. So your broken application is fixed and you have the view displayed. Now, apart from using the resource annotation here, you could have also used the qualifier and passing it the name. So the qualifier bean that has been created will be qualified and injected here. 